If you've ever wished AI tools like ChatGPT could be even more tailored to your needs, creating your own custom GPT might be the answer you're looking for. And if you think creating your own custom GPTs is something only reserved for advanced users, trust me, it's easier than you think. Before diving into how to create these, let's start with the two main reasons why creating a custom GPT is smarter in certain situations. One is to access and recall specific information. No matter what job you have in education, I'm sure you find yourself searching for the same information all the time. Maybe it's information you only need once or twice a year, or maybe it's information contained in a long, complex document or several documents. Here's a simple example. At Garnet Valley, like all school districts, we have many, many school board policies. It would be impossible for anyone to know every word of every policy. So when anyone needs to look up a policy, or what it says in a specific part of a policy, one way would be to go to the district website, click school board, find the policy section, click policies, search for the key terms or policy number, then find the information you are looking for. That's a lot of steps, but until now, that's really the only way to search for a policy. But with AI and the ability to now create a custom GPT, I can upload all of those school board policies into a knowledge base and have AI act as my policy researcher. Please find me our policy on acceptable use of technology. Not only does it read through its knowledge base, it synthesizes that information for me based on my prompt. So for example, I could prompt AI like this. I have a student who used his iPad inappropriately. Please provide me with language I can use in an email to the student's parents stating that the student is in violation of our acceptable use policy. Be sure to cite the specific policy and its contents. Here you go. Not only does it pull the information I asked for, it gives me a sample email I could use to send to the parent. Now, obviously I need to edit or rewrite this email to make it fit my tone and voice, but just having this example gives me a good place to start. The second reason you may want to create a custom GPT is for when you have repetitive tasks to complete. Again, no matter what your role or responsibility is in education, chances are there are times when you find yourself needing to do the same things over and over again. In my case, it's social media. Every day, I need to create a social media post for something in our district. Maybe it's a job posting or communicating to parents something important like a weather delay. Before AI, each post on its own probably took me 15 or 20 minutes when all was said and done. Not only did I need to think through what I wanted to say in the post, I needed to add key terms, an image, and hashtags. Maybe not a big deal if it was one or two social media posts a week, but what if I needed to create four or five in one day? That's a lot of time away from doing things that I would consider much more important. So with a custom GPT like the one here, all I need to do is give it some details about what I want, and it gives me a really good response for what I'm looking for. So what used to be 20 minutes to create now is like 20 seconds, maybe 90 seconds, if I want AI to create me an image. So creating a custom GPT is actually really easy. First, go to your icon or logo of your account in the top right-hand corner and click My GPTs. Then click Create a GPT. Decide what you want your GPT to do. Are you creating this to access information in its knowledge base or to help with some sort of repetitive task? For this example, let's make a custom GPT to help me find information on accessibility features of my MacBook Air. You'll next want to name your GPT. Choose a clear, descriptive name that reflects its purpose. For this example, I'll use MacBook Air accessibility features. Add a description. Here you'll want to provide a concise description or summary of what this GPT is designed to do. Again, make these simple. This AI assistant helps to find and learn about accessibility features on MacBook Airs. You'll need to add an image or an icon. I have one saved to my desktop, so I just uploaded it here. The next part is the most important part. You'll need to give this custom GPT its instructions. This is where you tell it what it is, how it should function, its operating commands, and what type of responses you are looking for. I can't stress this part enough. You will need to spend some time on this section. If you rush it, your custom GPT won't operate at its best. The way I build out my instructions may be a little different than how some others might do it, but I have found a lot of success doing it this way. If you want to add your instructions differently, go right ahead and feel free to copy my custom GPT instructions template linked in this video's description 
to make this an easy process for yourself. I type my instructions using this markdown structure. I find the AI responds better when using these markdown features. I start with context. I give it its role and memory information. You are a custom GPT designed to help me find and learn about accessibility features on my MacBook Air. Your knowledge base consists of the MacBook Air user manual. You also have access to web search, canvas, image generation, and code interpreter and data analysis. That's usually all I put in this section, but you may find you want more. Play around with adding more information and see what works for you. The next section I add is instructions. Here is where I give the custom GPT its instructions for what I want it to do. When prompted, you will read through your knowledge base for the relevant information on accessibility features for the MacBook Air. Your focus is on delivering value in every sentence, avoiding filler content. Your tone will remain professional, friendly, and informative with varied sentence and paragraph lengths to maintain reader engagement. Next is the response format. Here I tell the GPT how I want its response to be formatted. You don't need to include everything I include in my instructions. You'll need to figure out what works best for you. However, I have found success in giving my GPTs these instructions because I want my responses to sound more like me and less like a robot. Do not include any fluff when producing content. Each sentence should provide value to the overall goal of the content piece. Strictly follow this guideline. Avoid using non-restrictive or non-defining relative clauses. For example, phrases beginning with which, who, or that set off by commas. Instead, use concise direct sentences or rephrase structures that integrate the additional information smoothly into the main sentence. Prioritize clarity and a conversational tone. I like to add some version of this statement here because I was getting a lot of unneeded text in my responses and I didn't want to keep telling the AI to keep refining the output. The last section, operational commands, is one I strongly believe in. I don't think a lot of people add this to their instructions, but it has really been beneficial for me. Here is where I remind the AI not to sound too robotic. To do that, I add these bullet points. And again, don't worry about screenshotting these. I have them linked for you in the video description. Adding this section to my custom GPT instructions has made all the difference in getting what I want out of my custom GPT. I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but I've found success with this setup. The last thing you'll want to do, if necessary, is add to your knowledge base. Here you can upload PDF documents, Word docs, Excel data, or CSV files. You can make your custom GPTs private so only you can access them, or you can make them shareable so others can access them as well. Once it saves, your custom GPT is ready to use. Let me know what you think and please share any good use cases that you have found. I'm always curious to learn more about how others are using AI, and in this case, custom GPTs. Thanks for watching.